afternoon to all of you out there on Facebook land. I am here this afternoon sharing this great glorious gospel. Amen of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God has sustained you. Amen. And has kept you uh, during this time that we're facing such great uh, devastation by this virus that is trying to just wipe out many of the people in our country and around the world. Um, we have been talking, amen, about uh, the results of a lot of things. People come up with all kinds of ideas as to why this and why that, why does God allow. Uh, and a lot of times folks just forget that there is another enemy, another entity involved in everything that we deal with here in this fallen world. And a lot of times people don't really understand that we're living in a falling world where problems and times and chance happens to us all. Our job is to continue to believe God and to hold on to his unchanging hands and to trust that he has the ultimate plan for all of humanity. Amen. Before I get into the lesson uh, this afternoon, I like to start off with prayer. Amen. Not a long prayer, but just a prayer to invite Amen. All of the listeners whose ears are open to this glorious gospel, that we all continue to pray and touch and agree that lives will change. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for this opportunity to be able to come on Facebook Live, also on YouTube, and also on conference call lines. We thank you, God, that you have allowed, amen, with the wisdom of man, to be able to even though we're in shut-in, some folks are shut down and jobs are closed and people are home. But God, we thank you for the opportunity of being able to still spread this gospel while people are in this moment having time to reflect. I pray, God, that there might be something that is said through these lips of clay that will make a difference in somebody's life. I pray, God, that somebody's life will turn around, that somebody will be healed, that somebody will be delivered. I pray even now, Lord, that you will help all of those that are out there on the front line, especially in these hospitals where they're handling bodies that are sick. Amen. Father, I pray that all the resources and everything that they need will be available to them. I pray also, God, that they will open up the borders to allow food to continue to come through. Amen. And all the things that are needed for life to be sustained. I pray even now, God, that you will give our government wisdom and understanding, and not only our government, but God, the governments around the world. Father, there now is no time, amen, to put borders and all kinds of restrictions. God, we know that this is a time to come together. I pray, God, that the wisdom that you have given man, that we, they will use it to point in the direction of calling upon you to get the wisdom and the understanding, just like in the days of old, that the sons of Issachar, Issachar the tribe of Issachar, knew what Israel ought to do. I pray, God, that they will get the wisdom to know what they should do in this hour. And God, even as I prepare prepared to speak just a few words of wisdom and understanding out of your word, I pray, God, that you will give me clear understanding and let someone, amen, get an understanding of the word and the need in their personal lives. And God, we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Put those hands together and give God some love and some glory. Amen. Well, last week, amen, We last Wednesday, we were talking about, amen, repentance. Amen. And how God's requirement is repentance. That is a word that seems to have disappeared because we have so many excuses for our behavior. And don't turn me off because I'm not talking about you're going to be prosperous, you're going to get cars and houses and land. All of that comes with obeying God. I'm just a firm believer. I'm just a firm believer that Matthew 6 and 33 is, amen, a word from God. And what does it say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, amen, these natural things will, amen, come to pass in your life. Amen. And so we don't have to pray for a whole lot of materialistic things. Why? Because when you seek God and seek his kingdom, all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. As a believer. Amen. And so we were talking about on last week about repentance. I, mean, I I had a good time if nobody else had a good time. Amen. I was excited about it because, again, a lot of times understanding of repentance is misunderstood. 
And so my feeble attempt is to bring understanding. Amen. If you look down the Facebook line, you'll see last Wednesday uh, video, uh, amen, on our Facebook page. Amen. So, amen, I, I want you to listen in again as we continue on this series of talking about repentance, God's requirement. Now, I want to just ask a question just briefly right here and ask, do you have enough evidence to be guilty of being a born-again believer? Can people look at your life and tell that something drastic has changed in your behavior, in your walk, in your thinking, in your conversation? Amen. I remember when Peter was standing around the fire, amen, and, and he was accused of being a Christian. And, and when the young lady said, oh, you, you, you're one of them Christian guys. You're one of them Jesus followers. And he began to change his vocabulary. Amen. He was trying to convince them, no, I didn't change. I'm, I'm just like you. But I want to know it today, it, you know, because repentance brings about change. And I'll get into that a little later on. But, but, but the thing is, is that repentance brings about a change of mind, attitude, and all this. So you're going to hear this continually because I want people to understand that just because you go to church, just because you participate in church, but there is no change, then true repentance may not be a part of your life. What do you mean, preacher? Well, sometimes when we say that we're Christians and we love the Lord and different things, we are fine as long as things are going well. But if somebody approaches you with the wrong attitude, how do you handle that? Do you still bring forth the spirit of meekness? Do you still try to gain, amen, a reasonable understanding to bridge the gap so that there won't be no dispute? See, it's not when things are going well that you can convince people that you are a Christian. It is when you are under the fire. It's when things are uncomfortable. It is when you are attacked that really brings forth who you really are. If there is a real change because of repentance. Now, repentance is, amen, the birth canal through which we enter into the kingdom. I, I love that thought. I love that idea because when you look, look at a mother bringing forth a baby into the world, that baby has to go through the channel, amen, to be birthed into the natural, amen? And so when we talk about repentance and we truly repent, we are birthed into a new kingdom, amen? The things I used to do, I don't do no more. Why? Because I've got a new nature. I've got a new attitude. I've got a new disposition. i got a new way of talking. i got a new way of looking at life. Why? Because repentance brings about change. What does repentance mean? It means to change your mind. It means repent. And it means conversion. Amen? The Old Testament word, amen, brings out the idea, amen, uh, uh, metaneo. It says first and foremost means a change of mind. Amen. It also means, amen, to cause one to turn, to turn or change attitude. So these are the things that true repentance brings about. Amen. The use of the, the New Testament, amen, demands a complete. Now look at this. It demands, didn't ask. When you talk about re requirements of God, oh, I just want to please God. I just want to serve the Lord. No, we first want to repent. So that we can get into that birth experience to have a new, amen, attitude, a new spirit, a new change about our lives, amen? And so here it's a decision to completely change or to entirely turn around in the way of thinking, believing, and living. I'm doing a review somewhat. The word repent in the New Testament, amen, gives us the, in, the image of a person changing from top to bottom, a total transformation affecting, now listen to it, affecting every part of a person's life. Uh -huh. you, you, you have to hear that. Every area of a person's life. You may come in one way, but you don't remain the same. Amen? So we see that God's repentance is God's requirement, and we see John the Baptist, we see uh, Jesus, we see Peter, all of them, amen, in the scripture says it a numerable amount of times about the importance of repentance. This means that a person cannot come to God 
and continue to live, listen to carefully, and continue to live after he has received the Lord as a Savior. Now, people say, well, you know, I, I, I just, I'm just coming like, like I am. That is good. Come just like you are. You may be a drunk. You may be a, a hogmonger. You may be a, a living contrary to the word of God. You may have so many different hangups. But see, I'm so glad that God is in the business of the junk pile. I remember the old movie called Sanford and Son. <laughs> The movie Sanford and Son, you know, he, they would go out into the street and they would get all the junk, amen? And, 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 you know, that's just like how God is. He said, when I found you, I found you in your own blood. You wasn't even worth anything. You were about to die. But I'm so glad that he comes and he lifts us up, amen, reconnects us and gives us new life. I, I thank God that you don't have to walk around with, amen, uh, uh, bad thoughts about what you've done in the past and all. See, repentance takes away all of that. And when you understand that when you truly repent and God says to you, he has forgiven you, and then he says, I'll remember your sins no more, that is an awesome, that, that is an awesome report. Amen? So we see here that old song they used to sing, Just As I Am, uh, with one plea. Many young folks don't know that song. That's an old hymn song back years ago. Amen. I, 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 I'm a good follower with songs. I can't lead songs because I'll go off and make my own words and different things. But, but, but the, the, the essence of the song is saying, you know, Lord, I'm coming. Just I, I messed up from the floor up, but God, you won't reject me. Amen. There's many people out in the street now who feel so unworthy about coming into a church. I'm, I'm, and, and, and it's not the fact that everybody in the church is, is perfect because as I told a young man and I tell folks this all the time if you can look at the church as being a hospital and everybody coming in there got an issue and you understand they all consider outpatients then you get a better view of being able to say I belong right in there with them and you won't be saying, oh, well, I'm not worthy to go inside. I'm not good enough to go inside. No. Everybody that's coming into church are all outpatients. Even the preachers are outpatients. We just got a prescription to hand out all to the different <laughs> hand out to all the different people. And then we take our medication as well. Amen. Which is what? The word of God. We all have to come just as we are, but we don't remain. And then see, that's the key. When you truly have repented and received salvation, you don't remain the same. Amen? I, I, it's so important. Listen to this. It says, except, God, however, God does not expect us to remain the same. He expects change. And that is what repentance is all about. With a godly repentance, now look, listen to this. With a godly repentance, there must be an abandonment of your past and a complete and absolute surrender. Now, uh-oh, there it is. Uh-oh, there it is. Now, a lot of people come to Christ, and they surrender, and they get saved. But then they stop right there. But there's another, there's another level. See, 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 when you come in and, and you hear that gospel word, and, and, and it compels your heart to come to Jesus... He, at that moment, is your Savior. But then even after you come in now and you receive him as your Savior, now you must learn how to allow him to become Lord. See, that's the difference. See, when he becomes Lord, then you start having evidence that you truly repent. See, prior to, I, I'll never forget when I first got saved, I tell you, I, I didn't know anything about church. My, my wife introduced me to Christians. Christendom. I, I, I didn't know nothing about church. I, I grew up in the city of Newark, I, you know, and I happened to run into her, and we got to talking, and she invited me to her church, and, you know, I wasn't into that church thing, you know, but over a period of time, amen, God won my heart, and here I am some 40-something years later now sharing this gospel. So it, it, it's not a matter of the fact that you got to know all of this, but when I made him Lord, Amen. Then my life began to change. See, 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 you can come in and be and get saved, but if you don't truly repent, you know, you 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 gonna remain the same. You, you still gonna hang in the club. You're gonna still kind of be in that borderline. You know, you're gonna end up being a nice person. And and and, and, and listen, I, I don't have no problem with people being nice. I want you to be nice. Uh, uh, but see, niceness wear off in the time of heat. 
in the time of battle. See, see, when it comes to the, 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 the leather meeting the road, see, it's going to be a different ball game. Amen? Because you still have profanity in your mouth. You still have kind of behaviors that kind of has the traits of the natural man and, and, and you you have not yet gravitated to the spiritual man. You know, and a lot of times uh, guys will say, oh, you you go to church, you, you, you ain't no strong man. But let me tell you something. Just because you see men in church and they may weep and they throw their hands up and they, they worship God, don't ever get it twisted that they're still a man. And, and, and their power, but their power under restraint, kept by the power of God. And so it doesn't take anything from your masculinity. I'm talking to the men now. It takes nothing from your masculinity to worship God and to open your heart and to cry out to him. Amen? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, a real man is a man that serves Christ. I, I'm just going to say it like that. A real man. You know why? Because his, his strength is not in himself. His strength is in the Savior in whom he calls upon. Amen? So for this battle is not ours. It, 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 this, this, this virus going around, they, they say, well, Pastor, aren't you scared? I said, no. I am never fearful of anything. You know why? Because I am a firm believer that no one departs this life until their assignment is finished. Now, you can rush it by not being obedient, but I'm a firm believer that no one leaves this planet without Amen. Finishing their assignment. My question to you today is, do you know what your assignment is? Amen. Because when you understand your assignment and you flow in that assignment, that assignment from God protects you from the enemy. Amen. And so therefore, you know, when they talk about these viruses, they talk about, you know, the hood and all. I, I'm just a firm believer that, amen, you can't go nowhere. Oh, let me just change that. I know I can't go nowhere until my assignment is finished. And, and, and even when my assignment is finished, I don't want nobody to cry. I want everybody to remember what I said. If when it's time for me to depart the planet, I want everybody to have that testimony. What my pastor said, it must be time now that his assignment is over. See, my perspective is this. If you can understand that the departure, talking about me because I can't talk for the world, but when my departure is at hand, like uh, uh, Apostle Paul said, listen, You'll be able to be cheerful. You'll be able to be strong. You'll be able to have church. You'll be able to have worship. Why? Because you understand, hey, now my works are finished. I'm, I, I'm going on to be with the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we hear again, we talk about how that, you know, you got to move Christ from being Savior that he begins to now become Lord. What does that mean? That means that when he speaks or when you read it out of his word as you turn the pages and you begin to see that he says, oh, you got to make this change. Amen. You got to do this. Oh, you. And not that when you make these changes that you earn the righteousness because you did it. No, 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 no. It's when you get this word in you and the Holy Ghost. See, see, that's the, that's the key to the power of all this. When you get the word of God inside of you, now the Bible says that he will bring to your remembrance. Bring to your remembrance what? Of what God's word says, and then you began to get revelation of that word. Now, I hope I didn't get ahead of myself, but I, I sometimes get excited and, I, and I'll depart from the notes that I got written down here. But, but there must be a, a complete abandonment, amen, and then Christ must become Lord, and the evidence of our living according to God's standards will now begin to manifest. Fruits of repentance. Fruits of change. Fruits that I'm no longer what I used to be. Amen. Why? Because I'm becoming what God has called me to be. Amen. And now let me tell you something. It, all of us have that press. Are you listening to me? All of us have that press. What do you mean, preacher? Philippians 3, 14 says this. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now, what does that mean? I, I, I want to, you know, I, I love giving analogies, you know, uh, because it helps you understand a, a spiritual concept. Uh, when it comes time that you 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 done washed your clothes, amen, you done put them in the dryer, amen, and now you're getting ready to pull them out and you want to wear this, this nice shirt. Uh, but as you notice it, even though it's clean, you, you, you notice that there's some wrinkles in it. 
And so what you do is you go and you get your iron and then you start turning it on and, and, and then you wait till it gets hot. <laughs> Sometimes our problems are just the iron trying to get some wrinkles out of our behavior. <laughs> I you hear what I'm saying. You know, you sometimes the, the steam got to get on there. You, it's just like a tea bag. The flavor don't come out until you put it in some hot water. Amen. Which I, I have right here right now. And so the Bible says how that we press. So God is pressing a lot of the, the carnality, the, the, the shortcomings. His word began, as, as you began to seek his face, did you end up having an attitude like it says in 2 Timothy 2 and 21? If, it, see, here's the question. If, if a man therefore purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. What do you mean, preacher? When people can see from where you come and to where you are, it brings honor to God because they see the fruits of the change that the glorious presence of God has made in your life. Listen to this. It's a, so, so the hunger and the thirst is, is your desire to want to become what God has called you to be. Listen to what it says. He shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, called apart, separated, touching not the unclean thing. Not doing what everybody else does because it's okay. He begins to be sanctified, and then he meets, amen, he is prepared for the master's use. And then he's prepared for every good work. See, God doesn't use half-baked Christians to carry his gospel. That's why the church is so sometimes kind of weak, because you got gifted people doing gifted things in ministry, but they don't have that press to want to be separate and to live holy in the sight of God so that the world can see that there's a difference between clean and unclean. I wouldn't want to be a preacher that went around laying up with the sisters in the church. Why? Because it shows that there's not, there hasn't been a true repentance, that there hasn't been a change. Because if that's the behavior that I would have, then I might as well continue to say I am a sinner. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm subject to all these, these things and the elements of the world, uh, the world. But I always ask God, Lord, keep me. Keep me even when I can't keep myself. Wash my mind. Make my thoughts pure. How do I do that? i got to get in the word. I've got to keep getting in the word. Amen? Listen to this. Jesus was our doer when he brought salvation. I want to really explain this real clear. i got another 10 minutes. I, I, I want to say this to you. Jesus is my doer. He, he brought salvation to us. That's all. That's his job. He said, listen, on the cross, he said, it is finished. Now, he's done his part. Now, but in life, the Holy Ghost is now our helper. Somebody say helper. He's our helper. What does that mean? He's not our doer. Ah, He's our helper, but he's not our doer. In other words, well, if the Lord want me to change, he'll do, uh-uh, 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 no, 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 no. You have to want that change. See, repentance brings an attitude and a desire to do want to depart from evil. Amen? True repentance. Check this out. The Holy Ghost, amen, he's not our doer. He will help me and help us do what uh, God requires of us, amen, but it's our time now to be the doer, okay? If I was a drinker, at one time I was, amen, I had to make that change to not want to have the taste of alcohol. I couldn't keep going to the bar drinking, talking about, well, you know, uh, I, 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 I'm going to get there. No, no, you need to stop going to that ABC store. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is going to make you laugh. I remember when I first moved to North Carolina, amen, and my wife and I, we were riding down the road, and, and I, we kept seeing all these ABC stores. And, and, and not be, from not being in, from the South and different things, I, I told my wife, I said, Joe, I said, they, they got a lot of educational stores here. <laughs> See how ignorant I was to that, amen, not understanding that it was a a place where you sell liquor and alcohol, amen? And so, because see, up in New Jersey, 
It's written right on the, the top of the door. Liquor. <laughs> but here is ABC. And I, I said, my Lord, these, this is an educational area. I had to laugh at my own self. But anyway, so we got to realize that we now must become the doer. Amen. And so the, what, what, what is it saying? When he opens up our eyes. Now see, see, what's sin for me may not be sin for you at a particular stage as to where you are in your spiritual walk. But you can't be talking about you've been saved 10 years and you're still doing the same thing you've done when you first got into Christ. Amen? Because that's a sign that you don't have enough evidence to say you're a Christian. Now, don't, don't turn me off. Don't switch. Don't, 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 don't get mad. I am trying to get us all prepared, even myself, for the return of Christ. Everybody's looking at this virus and saying, oh, the Lord is getting ready to come. I don't know when he's coming. All I know is I want to be prepared when he comes. But we are seeing the signs. This is some of the signs and what the Bible says that these are the beginning of sorrows. Believe me, there's a lot of people weeping, amen, at this moment because of a lot of deaths that are taking place. They're cleaning out arenas. They, they're making room for corpse all over. So, so you know, there's a, there's a lot of sorrow. It may have not hit your neighborhood, and we pray not that it will ever, but I'm just saying don't be fooled, amen, that this is just, amen, a whim of, 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 or a thought, amen. People try to excuse the, the handwritings on the wall. The Bible says, meany, meany, tickle you faucet. Amen? The king saw it and his knees began to have fellowship one with another. So we need to understand that God is trying to get our attention that it's time to repent. Are you, are you listening to me? So here it said, it lets us know that, amen, if we want to please God when he opens up our eyes to certain things, we've got to be willing to repent, to make an uh, educational, intellectual decision and adjust our thinking and our behavior to conform to God's ways. The Holy Ghost does his job by what? Revealing, but he will not be doing. Revealing, but he will not be doing. What has the Lord been putting on your heart? What has the Lord been sharing with you that there must, there's a certain area in your life that requires change? What is it? It's a conscious decision. Will you remain belligerent? Will you continue to walk in your own way? Will you continue to defy God's requirement of change? Or would you humbly bow down to him, to his holiness, and adjust your thinking, amen, and your behavior to get in agreement with him and his word? One thing that I've noticed about people is that we always make excuses as to where we are and our limitations of change. But let me tell you something. When the Holy Ghost brings to your remembrance something that you read or you hear a word being preached and, and you, you can feel, you know, sometimes I'm preaching and I can, I, can, I can sense as I'm looking at certain ones, God is dealing with their heart. And then you open up the altars for them to come. And I always tell them, you're not coming to join the church. You, you're coming to be invited in, into the kingdom. And, 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 and they'll wrestle, they'll wrestle, and they'll walk away, you know. Because, you know, you, you, you got to understand something. At that moment, God is saying, don't harden your heart. Just come as you are. Don't, don't listen to all the outside noise and, and make that stop you from coming to Christ. Listen to this. I, I, I'm so, I love this story of Isaiah. Isaiah, amen, 6 and 5. Isaiah 6 and 5. I love his response to the presence of God. Here he is, he's, he, 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 King Uzziah had passed away in whom he might have had great admiration for and, and all these things. And then now he finds himself alone, but yet not alone. And, and all of a sudden, the, 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 the vision of God appears. Good God Almighty. That sounds mighty good to me. The vision of God appears to him, right? And look at what it says in Isaiah 6 and 5. He said, then I, woe is me. Then said I, woe is me. Wait a minute, what, what, what's going on, uh, 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 Isaiah? See, see, there's something that I've always said to people. Until you get a revelation as to who he is, you can't change. You can be nice, but you can't change. See, it's the revelation of God that brings a change in people's lives. Uh, it, it, see, because when, that's why Jesus said, Peter, Peter, he said, who, who do man say that I am? And Peter began to give all kinds of explanations but then he said, but Peter, no, 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 no. He said, I, I, I want to know, know who am I to you. 
And when Peter went and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, immediately Jesus' spirit lifted. He said, because man did not give you that. Uh -uh. I can preach to you all day. Uh, I, I, I can sweat, I can spit and throw oil all over you until you can slide to your front room. But guess what? Until you get a revelation of him for yourself, you can't really get delivered. And so here now we see, amen, this man in the presence of God. And the first thing he notices, God, I am too wicked to be in this position with you. He said, listen here, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of, unclean, uh, 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 midst of people with unclean lips. For mine eyes, my revelation, uh, uh, has seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Hmm. And because it was true repentance, somebody say true repentance. Because it was true repentance, the Bible says in that sixth verse, then flew one of the seraphims unto him, having a live coal in his hand, and which had put the throne on the, uh, from off the altar and laid it on upon his lips. And he said, he said, listen here, lo, this had touched thine lips. And what? Thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged. My God, except you get a revelation, you can't see that the blood of Jesus has washed and made you whole. Without a revelation, you don't understand that the cross through the atonement has made everything wonderful. You can't get a, until you get a revelation, you don't even understand what the cross is all about. You will wear it around your neck as a fashion, but it really, really won't have no meaning. You, you walk around with Jesus still on the cross, which is not really the truth at all. The cross is now empty. So until you can get a revelation, you'll be crying out, amen, when you do get a revelation, You'll be crying out just like him. What must I do to be saved? Look at the jailer. The jailer said, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. See, it's those revelation, revelational moments. Amen. Some area in your life God's dealing with, he's not showing everybody else who you are and what you are. Why? Because God is not in the business of exposing people. Ah, that's a whole other topic all by itself. Amen. God loves us. He's calling us to himself. He wants us to come and be able to be desirous of his presence. That's why he sent his son. I'm going to say one more thing and then I'm going to be done for today. And I pray that something that I've said in the course of this whole message has inspired you to want to be the child of God. I don't know about you, but that I, I just have a desire that I just want to be a child of God. I want to be as saved as much as a saved sinner can be. I want to be that man that God would be able to say, look at him. He's come a long way. I, I, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. These are the desires of every believer's heart. God, I don't want to just be faking this thing. I want it to be real. I want you to be my friend. I want you to be my, 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 my presence. I want you to be everything I am. I want you to walk with me. I want you to talk with me. I want you to stand with me. I want you to fellowship with me. I want your spirit. David said, God, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Oh, you, see, 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 when you ever get touched, my, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm turning into trying to preach. I'm, I'm supposed to be teaching this thing, but let me close with this. And so somebody say radical transformation. That's what we need today. We need a radical transformation. More than 2,000 years ago, Jesus began his earthly ministry by preaching what? Repentance. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what he said in, in uh, Matthew 4 and 17. He said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I believe, amen, as I look around, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It says, he, he, and, and if it's at hand, Hebrews 13 and 8 tells us this. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So today he is still speaking to the people's hearts, telling them to turn from wrong ways, amen, that are detrimental to their lives, and he will come and make the difference. I'm thanking God for his great salvation plan. I'm so glad that I, I heard the songwriter say, there's one thing I've done wrong. I stayed a sinner too long. Amen. I got saved at the age of 23. And here I am now, 64 years young, and I don't regret one day of surrendering my life to Christ. 
I want to invite somebody here who may have heard me over this here Facebook, over the phone lines, or YouTube, or, or where, however you might be listening to this broadcast today. I, I pray that God has spoken to you and has brought you to the altar of the kingdom of heaven. And you're now making a conscious decision to want to, amen, turn from your wicked ways and come just like you are and ask God to have mercy and to forgive you. Amen? Forgive you of what? Not the drinking, not the smoking, not the laying up, but God for not accepting your gospel plan. Now I stand here today, amen, I'm talking for you to say, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be, amen, that child of God that this preacher has been talking about. I come today with a repentant heart. I come open to you for you to be my Savior. And I don't want to just stop there. Lord, even after you have welcomed me in, I want to now learn your ways and allow you to be the Lord of my life. If you believe that God, amen, has sent Jesus, amen, for the pardoning of your sins by dying on the cross, you say, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, amen, and believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. If you meant that right now, amen, that you believe and that you have confessed, then I want you to know you're saved right now. Let me pray for you that are out here, amen, who may have just given your life to Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for this new believer. I thank you for all of those that are repenting today. And they made a conscious decision to surrender their life and will to you. I pray, God, as this message has gone forth, I pray that somebody will hear it, receive it, Rejoice in it and turn their lives around. God, I thank you for this opportunity. Now, as these who have repented, God, I pray that you'll seal them with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. God, I praise you and give you glory as the angels of heaven are rejoicing over these that have given their life to Christ. God, I thank you for allowing me just to be a part of this great salvation plan to be able to give the gospel to someone who is willing to hear your message. Now, God, as they have repented, I pray that no weapon formed against them prosper. I pray that, God, you will restore everything that the canker worm and the caterpillar has eaten away. And, God, I pray that you will give them, amen, all that is in store. God, may they truly turn to Jeremiah 29 and 11 and understand that you have an expected end of success for their lives. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to be blessed to Speak with such a great cloud of witnesses, and I pray that all the hearers today will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God for tuning in, and we'll see you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. If you uh, don't have a ministry to tune into, we'll be live on Facebook on this Sunday at 10 o'clock. Come, amen, tune in, share with some friends. I already know the message. I'm not going to let you have it yet. Amen. But come, amen, and be a part. And uh, just, just stay with God. I know this shutting is so unusual for most Americans, amen, because we're used to hitting the road, running all around. But use wisdom in your travels, and I believe you'll be safe. God bless. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer.